Morning routines, I don't really have one. The only thing consistent in life is making coffee, filling my water bottle, packing a bag and usually kind of hitting the road or hitting the streets. I'm Callie Vanular. I work in marketing, I'm a photographer, I'm a creative, I'm an athlete, and many more. I'm a huge fan of road trips, just in the way that you see what's in between, because that's often the most exciting and the most memorable moments are those people, places, in between where you're taking off and your destination, and those are the most beautiful. I literally have had a camera my whole life, which I know is like stereotypical photographer. I've shot film for as long as I remember. There's something nice about slowing down and having a finite number of shots on a roll. I think it makes you think about your photography a bit more. I have always loved media and shooting photos and capturing moments. I schedule my life around forecasts, really. You'll see a swell come in or a storm come in, and you need to get there right away. It's the same with the tides. When you're planning even a trip to go surfing somewhere warm, you want to make sure that the lower high tide is in the morning and not in the <laughs> afternoon when the wind comes on the water. So it could mean planning your trip later in the month versus earlier in the month. Tie the midship first for me. The work is just beginning. <laughs> King tides, these are all just the tide ripping. It's gonna make crabbing a little bit more difficult. Hopefully my floats are just still there. <laughs> yeah. Crabbing's kind of new to me. I did it for the first time a couple of years ago and then I find I go out crabbing quite a bit now. It's a fun way to get together with friends, drop a trap, boat around. You can go surfing and come back and pull up your trap. A little bit of adrenaline, trying to make sure the crabs don't fall out and you only take what you need and at the end of the night you just fill a bucket full of salt water and boil them up and have a nice family meal. So I'd always known that surfing was something I wanted to do, but with competitive snowboarding and that travel schedule, I never got the opportunity to really learn. So later in life, when I had more time, I started dedicating that time to learn to surf. What I love the most about surfing on the west coast of Canada is not only the fact that you're just out in the ocean surrounded by this temperate rainforest, it's cold, it's clear, there's wildlife, sometimes you see wolves, sometimes you see bears, but it's like nothing you could ever get anywhere else in the world. Like surfing in Canada is a very, very unique experience. Why I do it, I like need to be scared a little bit. Um, it makes me feel alive. I love getting 
kind of rocked surfing and surviving and you just feel kind of humbled and then also like a stronger person that you can survive these like little problems or issues that come at you throughout the day. In Canada, surfing in the winter, there's three kinds of people when you're getting changed behind your car. There's people that bring Tupperware so they can take off or put on their wetsuit and store it neatly in this waterproof container. There's surf mat people. Again, it keeps your feet rock free and dry. Or there's people like me who just stand on their shoes. You might not catch a single wave and there's something about that constant struggle to learn and adapt and fail that is addicting about it. It's cold and it's hard and some days you do not want to put on your wet wetsuit from the day before. And if you spend a day outside and you get home, you're all tired and you just feel like you've really you've done all you can do for that one day because you never really know how long life will be, you know. It could be over very quickly. 